Survivalpedia, so I have been actively looking for a power supply that can run ham radios, that can charge segways for my kids, can run appliances, lights, all that kind of stuff. And one of the guys at the Overland Expo ran his whole computer shop with one of the Alp generators. So I'm here with Perry, the owner of Alp, and we're gonna go over their generators, just talk to you about what they do, how they're different, and why they're a great solution to the similar problems I assume that you're having with regards to powering ham radio, off-grid, whatever it is that you have to do. So I'm wondering, where did the idea come from and why propane? Well, um, I'm very good friends with the owner of a, a factory, and they wanted to come to America with a product. And coming over here with another 2,000 watt gas generator seems kind of silly. It's nothing unique, right? There's nothing unique about that. And so I was looking for an idea, and I kind of came up with this idea of uh, what if we came out with propane because we all carry propane with us. Yeah. And it's such a struggle to take a gas can. And nowadays then when you, it's cheaper. And, it, and nowadays propane is cheaper. And uh, the second thing is that traveling with it, you know, a gas generator, even if, even if you dump the gasoline out of it, it still smells. If you're carrying gasoline with you, uh, and you or you have a gas generator, you might be able to dump all the gas out, depending on where you are, but now you're dumping it into the soil, you're dumping it in the dirt to be able to get rid of it. And it smells, I, I know when I carry mine, I have to put it inside the camper, and it smells. I'm in the process of looking how I can fabricate a, a bumper hitch just to put the generator and the gas out there, and I like the idea of not, not putting it on the inside. There's so many good reasons for propane. Your carburetor is never gonna get clogged up. It's vapor, it's designed and engineered to run on vapor. So as soon as you disconnect your fuel source, then it's, the vapor is going to dissipate. So there's nothing left in your carburetor or your fuel lines. Nothing's ever going to clog in it. And it doesn't smell. So now you could take it and put it in your kid's car seat. You won't even know it's there. There's nothing to spill, and it's nice and clean. That's awesome. So if we wanted to use something like this to, say, run, run a ham radio, because you're trying to do SHTF comms or something for a big duration of time, or even, like in my case, take it camping to recharge my kids' segways, like, how would that work? Well, um, as far as ham radios, the, the ham guys like to go ahead and get a spike in the ground. You know, they want to get rid. They want to. They want to filter as much as they can. So what we did was a couple things that we actually put separate ports on the front to be able to run in parallel. So you could put two together and get 1,700 running watts. The second thing we did was we kept our neutral right here so that they can run a ground wire to it for the ham radio guys to help with their filtering. It also works for mariners because mariners want you to run a negative off of this to the negative of a battery on a boat. Well, if you want to put two together, that means it's real. It's more difficult to get parallel. So we came up with a green port to be able to make the parallel the proper way. So that we could just stick two of them together and double the wattage. Exactly, you can get 1,700 steady running wattage. That's awesome. Okay, so if you're just using this, I don't know, just camping, you know, bug out's great, but if you just want to take this camping, like, what appliances or things could I run on this? Quite a, quite a few. Um, well, first off, if you're taking a power station, your power station is going to run out of power. You're going to need either solar panel or you use our generator and charge it back up again. At the same time, you absolutely, if you have children, you want their tablets charged. So we've got USB ports on this, so you could charge two of them off of the USB ports. At the same time, you still have two AC plugs down in the bottom that you could run four appliances to charge up all at the same time, which means you run the generator for less time to charge more things. You you can also run, I have 800 watt K-cup coffee makers, um, that's fantastic. We have fry pans that only pull 700 watts. Uh, electric heaters, 500 watt ceramic electric heaters. There's so many things. Electric blanket is great. When you're camping cold, take an, an electric blanket with you, throw it on your sleeping bag, run it for a half hour before you climb into bed, your bed's warm. So you're not warming up the bed, the bed's warming you up. That's 125 watts. So will this run something like a microwave? No, it won't run a microwave. You need to put them in parallel for that. Microwaves are gonna run, even the ones that say 700, what they're saying, like Walmart's got a 700 watt. It really pulls 1,100 watts, which is too much for one generator, but putting them in parallel, you have 1,700, so it'll run that. What about like a CPAP machine? CPAP machine's about 125, 150 watts, it'll run 
Oh, four CPAP machines at the machines same, same time. Yeah. My hero. That makes sense. So lights, yes. Fans, it, yes. Water pumps. That's why. That's why. Uh, all that. Videos, all that yeah. stuff that will run right off of this, no problem. Cell phone, laptop, subways, all that stuff. Okay. It'll run all of that. It's oh, outstanding. Okay, let's let's hear this thing. We, we turn it on. Yeah, we'll start this one. Over. Okay, so to get it started, you're going to connect a hose over here. Make sure it's nice and tight. That's coming off of a large tank. We also have a shorter hose that connects to the small one pound tanks. Once you've got the hose hooked up over here is a primer button. Now that releases the pressure so the propane can come from the tank and force the air out so that you pull it less pulls. So now we've bled it through. So like priming it to get the oxygen removed so that the propane fills the line and you don't have to like pull it a bunch of times to get it to everybody Exactly. Gotcha. Then, depending on elevation and cold, you depend. Uh, that's when you open up the choke. Up here at 7,000 feet, we open the choke quite a bit. And then it takes two to three pulls to pull the propane from here over to the carburetor on this side. And then we turn the choke off. And that's it. Yeah. I know my, my generator, we wouldn't be able to talk this close. That's 52 dBs. They test them at 7 meters. That's a little over 21 feet. And we're tested out at uh, 52 dBs. That is awesome. That's not even maxing out my microphone. I don't know what it's going to sound like in the video, but I can see that the human voice when we talk loud will max out my microphone, and that is right in front of the shotgun mic and not maxing it out. Well, it's good. That way your neighbors don't hate you. Exactly. <laughs> I got a knowledge if you it out. You were talking to me about eco mode, right? So what's it doing in eco mode? Like, how does that work? Well, what it does is that's energy saving, okay? So what's happening right now is we're out, we're down at about 200 watts. So if the, the RPMs will go up to whatever is needed. If you need 287 watts, it'll go to 287 watts. It, it pulls it up automatically. For instance, there's a, a, a heater that pulls 750 watts. You'll hear the generator race up to be able to feed the 750 watts exactly to it. And that's 750 watts, and that's the maximum volume that this generator, as far as how loud it goes when it's working. And I can still hear you over the top of the generator, which is awesome. Yeah. I bet if you get stuck that a good, I don't know, 15, 20 feet from your camper over a hill, you wouldn't even notice that. Absolutely. That's awesome. Whenever you're ready. Okay. We sold them out this weekend. They're available. So again, on priming it to get the air out of it. You can open the choke a little bit. The best valve on the market. Not being so. Thank you, guys. We got to start something else. First thing we do. Okay. If we're going to run in parallel, then what we're going to do is we're going to connect red to red, black to black, and we added a green port. Now normally what they have is you're going to connect to the negative or the neutral down in the bottom. That's what our original generators had. This generator's got thousands of hours on it. It's one of our prototypes. So I'm only going to connect the red and the black. The green would normally go down here, but it's a neutral and we're fine for demonstration purposes. Just back, you just basically added a ground up high. A neutral up gotcha. high. Sorry. Exactly. Now we primer. Open up the choke a little bit because we're at 7,000 feet elevation. Two. Third pull for me. Three pulls every time. We also take the Econo mode off. How can you take the Econo mode off? Because it'll try to regulate? Yeah. Okay. So we're now in parallel. 
parallel mode. Now, each one of these plugs, they're 20 amp plugs, have 1700 running watts. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. It doesn't matter which one. If you plug into one and you're pulling out 1200, the other three will still service the other 500 watts. Gotcha. So here's a 750 watt heater. We're going to plug it in. And then I'll turn it on. And you didn't hear any raise in the RPMs because we have eco mode off and we're not pulling enough to drain it out of any, any more than 750 watts. And we have 1700 there. That's, awesome. That's enough to actually be able to run a 13.5 roof air conditioning in my motorhome. Yeah, it's awesome. So you can run AC, you can run microwave, fridge, the really power hungry stuff. Absolutely. That's cool. Like that, huh? They've got some really cool attributes for camping, ham, microwaves, that kind of stuff. What happens if you were to use this as a backup? Maybe the electricity goes out, an earthquake destroys your house, you're living out of your camper, you've got a freezer full of meat, or you got to have some communications because the cell phones don't work, whatever. Well, I'll tell you what, most people have a barbecue in their backyard or a fire pit and they have a what we call we call them the five pound tanks which are 20 or, or five gallon tanks it's actually 20 pounds uh, most of them on exchange are going to go uh 15 pounds on like exchange blue rhinos you yeah. can buy at like walmart or gas stations exactly yeah. so grab that tank in an emergency even if you're going to have power shortage for 12 hours or 24 hours set it up in your backyard run a 25 foot extension cord into the house and get a power strip by your fridge Plug in your full-size, side-by-side, 27 cubic foot refrigerator freezer. Can you, can you do this on one or two? You can do it on one. You can run two. The surge takes the life of the machine. It's going to take you all, every bit of 1,000 watts to get it started. That's like Maybe the startup. Yeah. At startup, but then once it's running, it's going to drop down to like 200, 250 watts. Now, if you plug in a second fridge or freezer, it'll start it and they'll run side by side without a problem because you're only using maybe 500 watts. But if they both decide for the compressor to start at the exact same moment, pop your fuse. It'll, it'll trip it out. Okay. But you can run two units at once, and I've had a person that actually did that in emergency purposes. And on like day three, they started at the same time. So he reset and he was still good to Just hit the breaker and, okay, that and that's sense. it. So, so you, you, could, you could potentially buy one generator per freezer or fridge. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, that and, makes sense. Uh, you know what else it works for is that uh, quite a few of the furnaces in the homes, they run on natural gas. And if, if you have an earthquake, you know, you're supposed to turn off your gas. Uh, so that might not be a situation. Maybe you've got like a power outage and your electricity doesn't work. The gas is there, but you can't regulate or pump or blow. Exactly. It, it, depending on how many amps your, your furnace is taking, quite often they're less than 7 amps. We're at 7.1 amps. So you can actually plug your furnace into our generator heat and, your house. and heat your entire house. That's awesome. That's so awesome. we have a gentleman up in uh, the northeast that's doing that. He has 450 watts is what he needs. Completely off grid there. And 100 yeah. percent. Okay. In fact, I have people. There's a guy in Idaho that started our generator uh, the first week in November, and he's been running it 24 hours a day, seven days a week since then. Has he had any? Like blowouts or uh, running no. down? He's running everything. He knows what his, his limits are. As long as you know what your limits are, then it, well, you can make it work. Since I've done stupid things with electricity, the cool thing about that is if you exceed your limit because you woke up and turn on all the lights and the microwave and the AC and all the same thing in your one vehicle, it just pops a fuse and the generator stops. Right? Exactly. You go out and push that button, reset it, don't do that again, and you found your limit. It, uh, pretty much it's on ours, more forgiving. it'll trip it. It'll It'll trip a breaker on it, and then you shut the generator off, so it'll, it'll reset. Restart the generator, and you're ready to go. You haven't damaged any electronics. That's awesome. Your electronics or the generator electronics is all totally fine. So you can run easily, and it's about 400 watts, which is about half the power that we have. You can run a full side-by-side -side refrigerator freezer, put your Wi-Fi on it, 
Get your TV going with your direct TV box or a satellite Netflix box. Netflix for the kids. Netflix for the kids. Get their tablets charged up so that they're happy. Your cell phones. So you have communication. You can see what's going on in your area on the news, on your TV. You can put some lights on, especially LEDs. And your refrigerator, you've stored your food and you don't have to go out and lose $600 yeah, worth of you food in your lose refrigerator. All your meat. Exactly. So, okay. I, I think that's the solution. Thank you for your time. Where can My people pleasure. find these if they want to get ALPgenerators.com. That's easy. There you I go. Like it. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Thank you for watching.